Hello everyone, hope you've all been having a good day so far and we're here with episode 5 of the FNAF fan game tutorial series. So for this one, we're going to look at the office UI today. This will probably be the last thing that we do before we start getting into the really intensive stuff like the cameras and animatronic AI. Those are the things that will take more time to set up and program competently, so I just want to get the UI out of the way since it's pretty simple at the end of the day. So for simple UI like in the OG FNAF games, it's mostly just text. Now with UI with numbers, there's a couple of ways to pull this off in Click Team. Some devs use counter objects for displaying numbers, and while this works, it's not really the most effective method if you're just displaying numbers and text. So for the most most part, we'll just be using strings, except for one thing near the end of the tutorial, which we'll cross when we get to it. So for now, let's start on the really easy thing, which is the hour progression. For this, we can just add in a string object. Once we do this, we'll just set up our font and visuals until we like it the way it is. If your string is going to be on the right side of the screen like mine is, I'd recommend switching the text alignment to be right, it'll just look cleaner in game. We'll also just set our text to 12 a.m. since that's what the hour will be by default. Then in our value section, we're going to make a new alterable value titled hour and leave it at zero. Now it's time to go into the event editor. For changing the hours, we just need a simple every condition. So we're going to first make a new group titled time and then add in our every condition inside of there. For testing purposes, we're gonna set the every condition to something small like every 5 seconds. We'll change this later. Then for our actions, we're going to navigate to our hour string, alterable values, and select add to. And we'll simply add one to the hour value. Then we'll add another action, and this time we're going to select change alterable string. In our text box, we're first going to add the string expression since we want the text to display our hour variable, but since it's an integer, we need to convert it to a string first. Then we'll display the am bit by adding in a plus sign and then adding in am at the end here. So essentially what we're doing is making it so every duration of time that we set, we're adding one to the hour and changing the text to reflect that. The reason why we don't do this at the start of the frame when our hour is at 12 a.m. is because if we did, it would show up as 0 a.m., which of course isn't correct. So we're abusing a bit of a loophole where we have our first hour be set to 0 but still display 12 a.m. But as soon as the hour changes to 1, we begin properly updating our hour string. I actually forgot to do this earlier, but in our frame editor, we'll need to make a new later titled UI. And we'll actually copy and paste our hour string in there since I accidentally put this in my office layer. Once it's in the UI layer, just delete the instance of the hour string in the office and you should be good to go. If done correctly, your hour should change normally like so. So that's the hour part done, basically. The next thing that we'll do is create the night text that's going to go right below this. All this does is just tell us what night that we're on, and since we're, we already have a global value for our night system that we made in, I believe, episode 3, this will be very easy to implement. So just make another string and set up the visuals to look how you want. I personally say make the night text size smaller than the hour text, but this is all up to you on how you want to set up your UI. Once that's all set up, go back to the event editor, and this time, we're just gonna real quick make another group titled Miscellaneous. The reason we're doing this is because we're actually going to make a start of frame condition in this group, so this will be added on with a whole bunch of other stuff later, and this is why I'm putting it in a group called Miscellaneous, because it'll have a lot of setup for other general things. And one of these is going to be our night string that we just made. So in our start of frame condition, we'll navigate to our night string and change its alterable string, like we did with our hour string just now. And for this, we're going to start off our expression by just typing in the string night, followed by a space. After this, we'll use another string function since we're going to be taking our night global value which is an integer. Then if we go into special and then select retrieve a global value, 
we'll select our knight value. And so now our knight string will show us the knight that we're on. Now, if we run our code, we can see that it says knight one, but that's the text that we have on by default. So to make sure that this really works, we'll change our knight global value to two and see if it updates to say knight two instead. And sure enough, our knight text in game now says knight two. Okay, that will conclude it for the knight text. Now is the time, I think, for us to start setting up our power. Now depending on how you want to display this, you don't have to do exactly how I do it, but I'm essentially just going to do this like in FNAF 1, so I might come back to this later to add in some extra neat stuff, visually speaking, but this for right now is just to give you an idea on how to set up things like this. So we'll go ahead now and add in another string object. This is just going to be our power left text. We'll actually have this be two strings as one object. So one of these is going to be the power left text and the other is going to be the usage text for when we add in the usage bar. Once you get the text visual set up, we'll make two paragraphs that will display both our power left and usage strings. After this, we're going to set this string's instance value to 1 because we're about to duplicate it into another power left string. After we duplicate this, we're going to set the instance value of the instance that we just now made and set that to 2. This is a pretty similar thing that we did all the way back in the menu of the tutorial, so this should all hopefully sound familiar to you guys. Now in our event editor, we're going to navigate to our miscellaneous group and add an action in our start of frame condition. For this, we're just going to set the power left strings paragraphs to whatever its instance value is. If you recall, this will essentially loop over every instance of the object and set the paragraph number to whatever the instance value for each one is. So now when we run the game, the two strings should look like this. Moving on, we're now going to add in the actual number showing how much power we have left. For this, we'll just plug in another string object. For the string that is displayed at the beginning, you can just set this to 99 or whatever you want the starting power value to be in your game. Now for this one, we're going to want to add two alterable values here. One of these will be the percentage of power that's left, and the second is going to be a value we'll call power drain. The second value is going to control how long it takes for our power percentage to go down a percent. Now for this power remaining value, we'll set it to the same value as what our power will be at the start of the night, so 99 in this case. And then this drain value, we'll go ahead and set it to a high value like 400. We can always change these later, of course, so you don't really need to worry about it being, <clears throat> you know, balanced or anything like that. Okay, we're gonna hop back to the event editor and make a new group titled Power. So we'll make a new condition, and this is going to check if our power remaining alterable value is greater than or equal to zero, so basically checking for if we have any power left. Then in our actions, we're going to have our drain value be subtracted by one. So every frame that we have power left, the power drain will continuously be subtracted. Now we'll make a condition on a new line that checks for if the power drain has reached zero. So this will just check for if drain is lower than or equal to zero. Then in the same line, we'll make an only one action when event loops condition. You don't necessarily need to put this in, but for events where you really only want it to run once each time it activates, it's a safe bet to implement it anyways. Now here comes the really important part in this, in our actions, we're going to subtract our power remaining value by 1. Next, we'll reset the drain value that we have and just set this back to 400 or whatever number you're going to have at the start of the drain value. Then, we're going to change the alterable string of our power left string. So what we'll do is under change alterable string under our power left string, we'll utilize the string function again since we need to convert an alterable value into a string and have the number inside of the function be the power remaining alterable value. 
So it is mostly important that you have this action after subtracting your power remaining alterable value, since you want that value to change first and then apply the visual update after it's already gone down. So after all that's implemented, if you run the game, whenever the drain runs out, our power percentage will decrease. So right now, all that we have for our code that changes the drain is it just subtracts by 1, right? Well, of course, in a FNAF game, that's going to depend on how much power we're using. So we're going to need to have a usage bar that checks how many bars of power we're using up. So to do this, I'm going to do something a little different. I was talking about this a little bit ago. We're going to be using uh, the counter object this time. Now, this will be available to you by default, so you don't need to download anything. Uh, the reason why I don't tend to use counter objects too much is because they're arbitrary in most cases. I either use strings for text UI or active objects for anything animation related. But there are times, like with a usage bar for example, where you can use the counter object. So we'll add that in, and right off the bat, we need to change quite a few settings here. So when you import the object, you'll notice these three parameters called initial value, minimum value, and maximum value. For the purposes of the tutorial, we're going to want to change initial and minimum values to 1. Since FNAF 1's usage meter can have 1 to 4 bars, it's important we have our counter object be that specific range. So then, we'll also change our maximum value to 4. So now our counter cannot exceed either below 1 or above 4. It's hard capped within these sets of values. And then at the bottom here, we have a little display section and a parameter called type. Right now it's set to numbers, which is exactly what it sounds like, it displays numbers. So we'll want to click this and change this to animation, since FNAF 1 uses actual images for displaying the usage meter. Now once that's done, we can click edit on this images parameter to import our images. Once we do that, we'll just make sure our usage meter aligns with our power text. After this, it is back to the event editor. So for our usage meter, we're gonna have to add onto quite a few lines of code, mostly in our doors group. So going back to this, we'll just need to add actions that change the usage meter whenever we click on any of these door buttons. Thankfully, there's actually a pretty easy way to apply the changes to the usage meter, and it begins with just adding an action into one of these door button clicking lines that we made in the previous part. We'll navigate to our counter object, and we'll select set counter. So what we'll do is we're just going to grab all of the flags for our doors and lights on both sides of the office and just have the counter be set to all those flags combined. Because remember, a flag being on and off value-wise is equivalent to it being equal to 1 and 0, so they'll just add on to each other. So we'll just grab the door and light flags of our left and right button objects. Also, make sure to have one added on top of that since when nothing is on we'll still want the usage meter to have one bar of power at all times. Alright, once we do that we'll just copy this action and paste it to any line that checks for if we click on any of the door and light buttons. Now if we run the game, the usage meter will properly update as we click on the door buttons. Alright, we're almost done with the usage meter. The last thing that we need to do is actually make the power drain be variable depending on what our usage meter is. Because currently, it still just drains by one no matter what amount of power we're using up every frame. So we'll navigate back to our power group here, and go to the line that subtracts that drain value that we set up a little while back. We're going to edit that action and subtract it by whatever value our usage meter counter is. To do that, we just navigate to the usage meter down here and click the option that says current value. So if we have 4 bars of power, it'll drain the value by 4 every frame instead of 1 every frame like it was before. If we look at our debug panel as the game runs, we can see now that the drain value is being affected significantly as the usage meter changes. This part's not required, you can just make a whole other string object or whatever, 
but uh, you can just add the percentage at the end of the number here. You can even just add a bunch of space to your power left paragraph to do this and align the percent symbol up. It's, just, it's entirely up to you how you want to do this. The last thing that I want to do before closing this video off is just making the game transition to the 6am screen whenever we win. So we're going to go over to our storyboard editor and make a new frame just titled 6am. We don't need to add anything to it right now, we'll handle this frame on a later date, but we do want to make the game transport us here once our time hits 6am. So to do this, we'll just quick navigate back to the event editor in the office one more time, and under our time group, add a new condition, select our hour string object. Here we're going to compare the alterable value that holds the hour of the night, and check if that is equal to 6. This next step isn't required necessarily, though I still add this anyways whenever switching frames, but add another condition in the same line that just runs this once in the frame. Now under actions, we're going to select our storyboard controls and make the frame change to the 6am frame. Now whenever the game hits 6am, it should transport us to that 6am screen. And that should just about do it for this one. Pretty relaxed compared to the last one, honestly. The office tends to be pretty intensive, but the UI setup was isn't that bad. The next one though, oh boy, next episode is the beginning of the cameras, which is probably the second most intensive thing that we'll cover in this tutorial, just because of how much stuff there tends to be in it. So cameras might be two parts, I'm not sure. And then after that will be the start of the character AIs, but we'll have to see how that plays out. Anyways, thank you guys for watching, hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.